Hello guys, I'm Joshua8600 and welcome back to more Evercade stuff. Okay, we are now back on the VS because we're, we're done with the two Namco carts and today we're going to be working on Atari Collection 1. A lot of, the game, a lot of these games, you know, uh, I've played before and whatnot, but we're just going to go through them all. Some of these I haven't, but yeah, we're going to go through all of them. Obviously, I doubt these are going to get the 10 to 15 minutes that we normally do, which, you know, that's fair. Uh, just because these are really simple games, you know, uh, a lot of them are at least. So we'll, we'll, it, it'll depend on each game, but that, so, but the plan is, you know, we're still trying it out. So, so I have my spreadsheet ready. We have the timer ready. I, let's just step into adventure. Um, we, <laughs> adventure, everyone else adventure. I've, I've beaten, uh, adventure, you know, on all three, uh, stages multiple times before. Stage three is a randomizer, by the way. Go on a quest, recover the enchanted chalice, and return it to its rightful place in the Golden Castle. Battle ferocious dragons, find keys to unlock castle gates, and collect items to help you save the day. This landmark Atari classic is one of the foundations of the action-adventure genre. While its visuals are simple, it offers a surprisingly complex and satisfying gameplay experience. It really does, actually. That is still enjoyable to this day. The default game mode is somewhat simple, but if you're seeking a real challenge, make sure you try the alternate modes. Be careful, or you'll end up a dragon's dinner. I used to think they were ducks. When I first played this as a kid, yes, I played I played this as a kid. I had an Atari Plug and Play um, by Jack Specific that had Adventure and quite a few other uh, 2600 games on it. And yeah, I always called them ducks instead of because I didn't know they were supposed to be dragons <laughs> um, until until obviously you know I learned that you know a long time ago. But when I was a kid, uh, you're a lurky mod in case of need. Okay, thanks, Oscar, and hello. And good luck on your uh, gaming stuff that you were uh, telling me about. Okay, so let's start adventure. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, ah, yeah, let's just start the timer now. We're gonna do a quick, oh, why is this so tiny? Display settings. There we go, original ratio is more like it. That's horrible. But yeah, obviously level one is a uh, very simple. Let's get away from the duck. Stage three is a randomizer. Hey Nate, so how many you at so far, Joshi Washi Ubu? How many am I, am I at? Wait, does that warps me back to the start, to my spawn? I didn't even know it did that. You mean uh, MM seeds? Uh, two so far. Done two. I went the wrong way. You would think I would know this. I always get lost at this part still. That is that flashing thing is a bridge. I know it doesn't look like. Thanks for the 200 bits, Nate. And I warped myself because I keep forgetting there's no pause in this. I need to press the menu button to pause. Thanks for the 200 bits. I really appreciate it for the two seeds. So we're two. We're at the two in the challenge so far. Hey. The emulation is like a little off. The colors are really weird looking. Come on, duck. I like how the I like how the dragons just have like uh holes in them, so that's where your character goes if it dies. Okay. Are we gonna do it? Are we gonna do it? Boom! Gotta love that Atari boom. But yeah, that's the goal of the game. Get the Shallows back to the Yellow Castle. So, so obviously, Stage 2 has is like more difficult insofar as... There's that stupid bird that takes the arrow, which is a sword away. And then, so yeah, now he down here is the maze, and look what happens if I die. Yeah, you get stuck in there. Give me the, my... Give me my... Uh, give me my arrow back. But yeah, but no, um... State like if you re but I think three is the best the best one because it has the same map layout map layout is too but the items are randomized it really is a randomizer adventure in 1980 according to that's when this was released according to the Evercade has a built-in internal randomizer and it's amazing I beat the stage three once in about three or four minutes I got very lucky that the the yellow key was like in the room right next to me, and then the duck or the bird 
flew the chalice right at me, so I picked up the bird, and that counted. So yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not actually gonna play through stage two or stage three, but we know, we know what, we know what adventure is. Ever, everyone knows adventure is a great game. 1980 had a randomizer. It's great. So adventure, yes. Like it? Of course we do. But is this gonna be? Oh, by the way, I, I should probably say this. Um, since getting, you know, the Evercane stuff, I've gotten an Atari Flashback 9, which has an SD card slot, so I, so you can literally play any Atari 2600 ROM on it with an actual joystick. Well, one of the Flashback 8 and 9 joysticks, because the original ones work on the Flashback 2, but not in the later ones. Good job at games but yeah so if i'm gonna play 2600 games that's probably gonna be the platform i'll play them on on the flashback 9 um i'm not sure about the emulation quality versus this yet yet uh this yet but you know it's uh still that's probably gonna be my pre my preferred platform just because i can have them all together you know in one sd card on the one thing instead of switching between the two cards but obviously there are 7800 games on here i believe some 5200 so yeah i'm rambling but yes that was adventure uh, let's move on to number two, Alien Brigade. 1990 shootings. This is a 7800 game. The Plutoid alien zombie force has infiltrated the army. They look like soldiers, but are actually hostile aliens from outer space. They look like soldiers, but are actually hostile aliens. Your job is to seek out and destroy these nasty invaders. Procure powerful weapons on site. Rescue hostages. Avoid shooting any friendly targets, and most of all, stay alive. Save the Earth in this thrilling 8-bit gallery shooter. They look like soldiers, but actually hostile. So how do you know what's a friendly target? Or wait, why are they even called targets of the friendly? That doesn't make sense. So uh, oh, now we have a pause button. So select game mode, restart, whatever, move. Restart level is X. What an interesting button for restarting the level. Fire weapon and throw grenade. Okay, I think I could get down with that. Good music so far. That's music. Can you believe it? Uh, alien. Yeah, I'm not going to sit through the whole thing. Alien Brigade. Let's see. There's standard, advanced, no expert, or novice. We're going to choose standard. So... That's my cursor. Okay. I had to move like my cursor to the right first to truly start the game. Was I not supposed to shoot? I don't know who I'm supposed to shoot. Okay, I lost points there. Let's see. I played this a little bit before. Oh, yeah. So them, I don't shoot. The blindfolded guys. Or him. Hmm. Them, I, I do. Not Those little guys, I do. What? I'm confused. No, that guy was wrong. That guy was wrong. Is it is it um based off what they're wearing? Okay, the naked guy the not naked, but the shirtless ones we don't shoot. That's what it was. That's what it is, I think. Yeah clearly what it is. Oh, dang it. I'm glad I missed him, actually. So far, not so bad. Oh, so far, a little bit repetitive. I'll give it that. But, you know, not bad. For, I can, for the 7800, you know, it's actually really good. Did that guy just explode a blood? It's really hard to do this with the D-pad. Because the 7800 uh, controller had like a control stick, right? Shooting the wrong people.
Okay, so that was a stage. Oh? You have disregarded your commanding officer's orders. Your court-martial is now in progress. Next time, you might try executing the mission. Not the civilians and their facilities you were supposed to protect. I lost? Well, screw you too, game. I lost. Okay. We got the idea. Shoot the hostiles. Don't shoot the friendlies. And there you go. That's Alien Brigade. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, next up is Aqua Venture. I'm pre I'm kind of familiar with this one. So it says 2005 because this was never actually released originally. Uh, I'm pretty sure the first time this ever saw a any kind of release was on a flashback console, or you know something like that. But I am familiar with Aqua Venture. Dive into the depths of the sea in search of tre is in search of treasure in Aqua Venture. Battle against a time limit to reach the riches laying at the ocean floor. But watch out for aquatic creatures and other hazards that lay in your path. You can shoot them to clear the way and earn points, but be careful. They'll be replaced with faster, more aggressive creatures before long. Shelt for unknown reasons back in the Atari 2600 days, Aqua Venture finally came up for air in 2005. With its simple yet challenging gameplay, it will have you taking the plunge again and again. Let's go! And this one kind of just starts up. Uh. Okay, A starts it. So, from one or under. Oh my god. I'm bad at this game. I played it a lot, but it still confuses me. So, from what I gather, the goal is just each time go down one, swim up with the treasure, and then touch the mermaid. That's that's what I gather the uh, the objective is. Look at that. I, I'm barely on stage two, and I'm already almost dead. Now there are snakes here. And those are the, the, the faster enemies replaced before long, so that's why. You have to be careful with what you do. Oh! Mermaid. So, yeah. This real like this. I don't know why this like. I can't see why this w wasn't released originally. This would have been. I'm dead already. Game over. This is actually not a bad game. You know. This this would have been an amazing. Probably considered a, an Atari 2600 classic if it was released. Because I like this game a lot. I'm bad at it as you can tell. But the goal is simple. Just swim down, grab the treasure, swim up, touch the mermaid. That's it. The sound effects aren't horrible, I'll say. Uh. It'd be nice if there was music, but then again, what do you expect? It's Atari 2600. And we can't just, and the and the goal of the game is obviously to get the high score. It's an Atari game. It's hard to see your guy on that on the top screen there with that with the the blue mesh the blue like collides. That one that one annoys me. Oh, come on. Yes. I never make it far into this game. I think this is like not the farthest I've ever been, but kind of close. I think it would be easier with an actual joystick. I don't believe I tried this game, this this out on the Flashback 9, actually. I would need to try that. So far, so good. Hey. Ah. <laughs> believe it, I didn't actually know that the sights killed you. I don't think I've ever touched the sights before. <laughs> or if I did, I just don't remember. <laughs> ah, I wanted to just get one. Oh, wait. Last life. It's our last life. We saw one more. If we get game over, I'm switching the next. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be switching the game after this life. Whether it's this level or not, when I die again, I'm going to switch to a different game.
Oh my goodness. I'm about to die. Mermaid. No! I died. Oh yeah. Hey, that was Aqua Venture. I like Aqua Venture. It's cool. So yeah, Aqua Venture. Where is that on this on the list here? Oh, it's all the way at number eighteen. I just the way I ran, I wrote this spreadsheet. I just went by the order of the games on the back of the box rather than alphabetical because that would have taken too much effort. And you know me, I am very lazy. So let's go on to Asteroids, which uh, is another game I am bad at. And it's all right. I'm not a huge fan. Like I, I like Asteroids enough. I don't think it's amazing, to be honest. It's definitely not my favorite, you know, of the classic Atari games. But it's all right. Out on a routine patrol, you suddenly find yourself in the middle of an asteroid assault. Honestly, I never thought about the story in any of these. So reading this, the reading these are actually, you know, quite a big, a bit of a treat. With deadly debris approaching from all directions, you have no choice but to vaporize the rocks for as long as you can. Equipped with your trusty blaster and a few other tricks, you'll need to make rubble of these rocks before they do the same to you. Stay alert. The asteroids aren't the only ones out there. One of the most famous and beloved cl classics of the Atari library. I can understand why. It's just me personally. I'm not, you know, I'm not the biggest fan, but I can definitely understand it. You know? Uh, Asteroids stormed onto the Atari 2600 in style. With deep yet accessible gameplay and a variety of entertaining modes, Asteroids is a great game to play whenever you have five minutes to burn or whole evening. Really? Toggle the mode switch to play with additional lives, different features, and to access the two-player mode. Modes 1 through 33 are single-player only. For two players, choose modes 34 through 66. That's really good to know, because I was actually about to mention the numbers, um... On the, on the box art, you can see it's 66 video games. I was about to get to that, actually. To use features such as hyperspace and shields, press down on the control pad. Hyperspace, I b like, from what I understand from my experience in playing, it's just like random teleportation. It can send you directly into a um, thing and kill you. But yeah, it says 66 video games. That's what it's referring to. It's not really 66 games. It's 66 variations. 33 single player and 33 uh, two player variations. So yeah, so when we see, for example, Canyon Bomber, it says eight video games. It's not entirely true. Adventure is not three games, but it is three difficulty. So yeah, Asteroids. Let's look at the controls because that uh, because we really need to know how to control the Atari game. You know, you you've seen an Atari controller, right? How comp how complicated they are. All one button. I'm just joking. They do have one button, but I'm j I'm just rambling for the joke. Okay, restart game level, uh, select game mode, that all makes sense. And obviously, which, to be fair, the Atari controller had only one button, but the actual console had other f uh, switches to flick and things uh, that actually did things. So it, this actually makes sense. So I was just giving it a hard time just for a joke. <laughs> okay, so Asteroids. We're not going to start the timer until I actually hit start, pl uh, start playing it for this one. Um, so you can see here... You can just, uh, unfortunately, you have to press it each time to get all the way up to, like, the number you want. Like, and you see how it switched from the one to the two, so that's two player. So let's just do one, one. In three, two, one, let's pickle. You don't have to move, like, at the first couple of, uh, levels. But, like, I just pressed down, you see how it teleported me and killed me. That's great. So yeah, it's, it's a gamble. You don't necessarily want to be doing that. And I wasted two lives, so this is what we're going to do. Oh, wait. Um, I really wish there was that they, that um, Blaze... I really hope Blaze in a future update will add a reset game option to this menu. Because it's, really, it's annoying having to exit out and reopen it. It's not the biggest deal, because it, it goes pretty fast, but still. A reset game would, would make sense. Because even the Atari had a reset uh, feature in some way. It literally had a, like a reset to like... So... I actually played this quite a bit on the uh, on the flashback asteroids. I was never... I'm n Like a lot of these games, these classics, I'm not good at. Because they, they take, like, a lot of precision that doesn't isn't really required in games today, you know? 
So it's like they're so simple, but because they're so simple, they take a lot of precision to master. And that was the design of them. Because if you're going to make a simple game, at least make it hard to master. Also, the... The, 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 the freaking sound of you, um, blast is shooting is irritating, and it hurts your thumb whenever you have to mash the shooting button. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just complaining for the sake of complaining. This is alright. It's asteroids. I just suck at it. Ah, dang it. I'm not gonna be playing for a whole, uh, game. Did I just get an extra? I think I just got an extra life for a score of 5,000. I think that's what that beeping was. I was about to say, because I know there are extra lives in this game. I'm not going to be playing a whole game of this. My hand... I just hit start! Oh, I was trying to pause! I have to remember Atari doesn't have pause. Well, I'm definitely not playing a full game of it now. I'll give it one life. You know what? This is what I'll do. I'll put it up to, like, level 16. I don't know what level 16 is. Let's just start. Oh, look at that shield. What does it do? It killed me. If you hold it for too long, you die. So I've never actually, like, played with this setting before. What, what does it do? Oh, okay. Okay. You go through them. Interesting. Okay. It's asteroids. We get the idea. Okay. So asteroids gets a... Uh, it should already have a check mark. Yeah. Asteroids 2600. And I like it. I'm going to say yes. Again, it's not my favorite game, but it's asteroids. You can't hate it. So far, these are all fine. Especially adventure. I, I really like adventure and aquaventure. Is it... Is it a... Uh, is it a coincidence that the... The two games I really like so far are both an adventure. Hmm, it is. It's complete coincidence. <laughs> so, Canyon Bomber, number five. 1979, eight video games, two players, action. Take to the skies and test your accuracy in Canyon Bomber. Compete against the computer or another player to see who has the steadiest aim as you drop bombs on targets in canyons or take out ships in the sea. I don't think I've played Canyon Bomber before, actually. I might have, but um, I've tried a lot, of, a lot of 2600 games. So I might not have tried this one. Uh, on its face, there isn't a whole lot to Canyon Bomber on its face, but it's in the simple mechanics that the true brilliance of the game shines. Whether you're playing on your own or against another player, everything comes down to your timing and chosen target. Miss too many times and you'll find yourself on the losing end quite quickly. Try out different modes to play with alternate rules and targets. To play in Canyon Bomber mode, choose modes 1 through 6. For C Bomber mode, modes 7 and 8. For 1, 3, and 7, pit you against the computer, modes 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. Okay, see, this is very helpful to know. Like, um, so what's the computer? I need to know. 1, 3, and 7, because apparently I need to try Canyon and C Bomber. So I need to play 1 and 7, modes 1 and 7, basically. So, it's, uh, one. I don't understand. Uh, so every time you press a button, your thing, um, I definitely have not played this before. I'm the yellow. The computer is the red. Hmm. So obviously I'm losing. Maybe my health file actually took. Yeah, it really is just drop bomb. That's the only control. Like I thought. Okay. So it. I assume the game ends. 
right now. I lost. Okay, let's try. Well, that was Canyon Bomber. Let's try Sea Bomber. Alright, so it drops it right below you. Hmm. How do you hit something? Like, it looked like it went right through. What? How much? What? I don't get it. This one. So does it does it have to hit the front of their boat? Is that what it is? This is confusing. I think if you understood how it worked, this could be a very uh, engaging, especially with two players. I can see this being a very engaging game. I'm just a little confused with the uh, Sea Bomber. Canyon Bomber makes sense to me. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Let's try uh, Canyon Bomber again. Computer is beating me up. Dang, we both missed. Alright, this game makes sense. I'm gonna move on. But it makes sense. I uh I don't I don't mind that. I like I said, I think in a two player game that could actually be um very engaging. So Canyon Bomber gets a pass. Uh that was the name yeah, it's just Canyon Bomber. Where's it on this list here? Okay, it's number ten on here. Okay. And that's yeah, that's another like it. Just Am I good at it? No, it's my first time playing it. And against the computer, it might be, you know, a little boring. Then again, it still is Atari. We have to remember that. But with two players, that could be really good. Okay, next up is Centipede. Everyone knows Centipede. The peace-loving elves of the Enchanted Forest are, become, are being terrorized by pests, a troublesome flea, a mischievous spider, a poisonous scorpion, and worst of all, a giant centipede. It's up to the heroic elf Oliver to use his magic wand to fend off these fiends and chase them away from the Mushroom Garden for good. Centipede is Atari's legendary shoot-em-up that sees you squaring off with the multi-segmented giant centipede. As the centipede makes its way down the screen, you need to try to eliminate it piece by piece. Aim carefully as taking out a middle segment will split the creature and leave you with twice the problem. All the while, various other insects will get in your way and make things more difficult. How long can you keep the nefarious centipede at bay? Use the game select button to choose between easy and standard modes. And hello, whoever joined the voice chat. <laughs> okay. So, our... Okay, so yeah, our controls are just moving, shoot, and selecting the game. Everyone knows centipede. Let's begin. I didn't, uh, res I didn't stop the timer from last time. Okay. So, Centipede, Atari, copyright 1982, 3, 2, 1, let's pickle! No, I did not hear you, what? You can make, imagine someone saying that what? Oh, saying that while dancing. Let's do the pickle! I should make up my own dance. Make up my own TikTok dance, even though I don't have TikTok. Make up my own TikTok dance. Call it the pickle. Yeah. 
Ah. Uh, I pick a rank, yeah. This is, this is, ah, dang it. This is an example of another one of those games that with the D-pad doesn't feel that good. It's just because you're moving around so much to try to like, uh, because you're, you actually move around so fluidly and fast in Centipede. So, with the D-pad, it doesn't feel nearly as good as it does with the joystick. So, this is definitely not the preferred way to play Centipede, but it's still Centipede, you know? I'm... I'm on my last life already on stage one. I do suck. I, I suck at all these. I suck at all these games. I died. Uh, say that again. Yes, yeah, Donkey Kong Country is on the list, but I'm doing. But I'm focusing on other projects first. Yeah. Come on, die! Last bit of the centipede! Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was close. Come on, die! Look at this. Uh huh. Hurts my hand. This game hurts my hand with the spamming the button to shoot. This hurts. Oh no. Yes, uh South Park. Oh duh, family go wait a second. Yes, I was for some reason I was confused into Oh no. Yeah, I know who that is. I can't remember his name. I don't know why. Well, for some, because I know who that character is in Family Guy, but I was thinking of Big Al from South Park for some reason, so I said South Park. But yeah, that's definitely Family Guy. My bad. Okay. Okay. Crystal, no, big. Uh, he doesn't. Al doesn't talk, talk like that in South Park. But I was just uh, confusing the two. Yeah, in South Park, it's Big Al. And he has a big gay boat ride. I love South Park. Such a good show. So funny. I haven't watched it in a few years, though. The last season I watched was the one after Kyle's dad was the troll. Basically. Okay, so Crystal Castles, by the way, is our next game to get back onto topic. <laughs> game number seven. Okay. Played what? I play Stick of Truth, yeah. I haven't played the Fractured But Whole, though. But I, but I uh, beat Stick of Truth. It was a great game. Bentley Bear is trapped in the Crystal Castles. To get out, he will need to collect all of the gems located throughout the castle. I played this before. This is basically a Pac-Man clone. When Bentley collects all of the gems on the current castle, he will move on to the next, more difficult castle. Wandering throughout the castles are a wide variety of dangerous creatures, which Bentley should avoid. From time to time, a magic hat will appear. If Bentley collects the hat, he will temporarily be invincible to the castle's inhabitants. What does that sound like? Use the select button to choose your starting level from one through eight. So are there only eight levels in this? I, I again, it's it's if it's just like Pac-Man, and I suck at Pac-Man, so I'll suck at this too. But I think I like this better than Pac-Man, at least original. So this is ever. I'm playing this on the Evercade. Okay, so Crystal Castles. We're just gonna start on level one. Three, two, one. Let's pickle. Wait, you, I forgot you can jump in this game. So you can... Yeah, you can jump over... You can't jump in Pac-Man. That's why this is better. And I and I died already. Alright. Alright, one last one. I win that level, even though I died once. Hooray! Ooh, now there are trees here, and the trees move! What is all this stuff that's on my screen? Well, it, it, like I say, I said it's a Pac-Man clone. It's not quite a clone. It's just it's the same idea, you know. Collect all the things on the screen to move on. 
but you're not forced to move only one, you know, and only up, like, side to side. You can move all around, you can jump. Sure. Ugh. Uh, I have short hair. You can do whatever you want. That's a nice little fanfare after being that level. I'd... If you're, I don't know what you're doing, but if you're gonna, like, make me, just, you can see me right now. You can see what my hair is like. Oh. Well, you can look at my profile pic. That's still me. But how do I get down? Is this a ladder? Well, I don't, I don't understand. How do I get down here? Okay, that's an elevator. Okay, Crystal Castles, I like this game too. So far, like, I will say, Blaze picked a great selection of games for this. Again, there's... I want that hat. Yo! I pick up the hat, and not only am I invincible, I killed that whatever it was. It looked like a gigantic dancing centipede with the skirt. Uh, it's, uh, I call my hair Dirty Blonde. That's how I describe the color. Yeah. Because it used to be really bright blonde, but, like, just as I aged, it got like this. Kill the tree! Eat the tree! Eat the tree! Bear! What? Oh. All right. I like Crystal Castles. This is a good game. How did I survive that? Okay, I don't know how I survived that. Jump! Oh. All right, I'm gonna. I'm, okay, I'm a little bored of this now. Crystal Castles. We're gonna move on. But yeah, good game. It, it can be hard, yeah, but uh, that one is one that I would say wouldn't even take that long, take that hard, uh, take that long to get good at. I like that. Next up is Desert Falcon. I think I played this one before too. Not entirely sure. So let's read the thing. Yeah, I always read the description. Desert Falcon is an arcade-style isometric shoot 'em up. Many of the Pharaoh's great treasures are lost throughout the desert, and your goal is to steal as many as you can to earn points. The game features a scrolling isometric point of view as you control your falcon through various desert landscapes. The treasures you are after are guarded, of course. Many de desert creatures, including vultures, warriors, flying fish, sphinxes, and more, will oh my, will all attempt to stop you from succeeding in your task. At the end of each level, you will need to face a large howling sphinx before you can continue. Your falcon isn't completely unarmed and has the ability to fire darts, which can be used to destroy your foes. You will occasionally come across some hieroglyphs in the sand. Several different power-ups can be gained by hopping over three of these hieroglyphs. Okay, you need three. You may become invincible, warp to the end of the level, earn extra points, create a decoy, or even get a bomb to destroy your enemies. To activate these powers, simply press the fire button twice quickly. Use the game select button to access the options where you can select the difficulty level and choose between one or two player modes. Cool. So... Huh? I don't know. There are a lot of, like, airplane flying games. Yeah, I, d I don't think I've played this one specifically, but let's check it out. Uh, we're going to do standard, not novice. Three, two, one, let's pickle. Get, get three high rows, it says. There's music! This game has music! I already love it. Uh, I don't know how to, just, I just, I just know the way, yeah, I did die, I don't know from what. Shh, it's okay. 
It's I know I died, it's okay. I'm d oh my god, I suck at this. Why do I why do you have to keep holding up to move? That's really annoying actually. What color eyes do I have? They're blue. That was my last one. Game over in less than a minute. Let's try that again. Oh, hey, look at that. You can press down to fly. And and then pressing up lands you so you can be able to go over the hieroglyphs. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, do my does my weapon not do anything? Is that it? Does my weapon just do diddly? Blue. Uh, either. I don't care. Doesn't really matter. Ah. My favorite color. Uh, let's just say purple. I'm dead. Alright, last life. I have no idea what I'm doing in this game. To be, and uh, honestly, I, I don't like, oh, uh, what? I don't like this one. This is the first, I'll give it, I'll give it one more attempt. So far, this is the first one I'm not enjoying that much. And that's okay, I don't, I'm not gonna like every game, but this is our eighth one. And uh, it's the first one that we didn't like, so I, I consider that a win on its own. And I say we, I mean I didn't like it. There's probably a lot of people that like it. I mean, Blaze chose this game for a reason. I can see why people would like it. I'm, I just don't understand, like, why my shots don't seem to do anything. Oh, I killed some- I killed something! The game you're thinking of, War Thunder? I've never heard of it, but... Okay, so, what, so did I activate my power? Okay, what, how did I die there? Is touching those things just deadly? Is that what's going on? Is that how I'm dying? Ah, come on. Okay, last life. What? World of Warplanes. Kill Uwez, double prize. Okay, I'm gonna make a safe state right here. My first safe state in any of these Atari games, by the way. So I wanna know what this fight is like. I'm dead. No, I didn't. Tom Clancy ah, has his own airplane game. Tom Clancy's Hawks. I don't I've never played a single Tom Clancy game. Ah! Yeah, I don't like Desert Falcon very much. That and that's okay. So when was this game released? Desert Falcon was released in 1987. For a shooter in 1987, I would say that's pretty good. But I don't like it, so. <laughs> 1987, though. Good job, um, whatever. Desert Falcon 2600. No. We did not like that one. I'm pretty sure the uh, Atari Collection 2 has... It wasn't Desert Falcon also on the 7800? Isn't that on Atari 2? It is! Desert Falcon 7800, so... Great! Use your own discretion. It's our, you have your own artistic discretion. I'll leave it up to you. Double Dunk. A sports game. Doesn't matter. Hey. Uh, so, yeah. Just move player, shoot offense, and steal defense. Okay. So, Double Dunk. 
Says new on the on the on the box art. Says new. It's totally new from 1989. Double dunk is a simulation of two on two half court basketball. Teams have two on screen characters: a shorter outside man and a taller inside man. A single in a single player game, the player controls the on screen character closest to the ball, either the one holding the ball on offense or the one guarding the opponent with the ball on defense. In two player games, each player may control one of the two teams as in a one player game, or both players may play on the same team against a computer controlled opponent. That's really cool. That um two players can either be on a team or against each other. That's actually really innovative for nineteen eighty nine. Speaking of nineteen eighty nine that was the year Taylor Swift was born. And I have to say that as a Taylor Swift fan, just December 13th, 1989. So let's continue. In two... What? <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not sure. J j just pick what you think uh, would fit. In two, pl in two player games, each player may... Control one of the, okay. I already read that. Okay, as one of the later releases on the platform, Double Dunk is one of the most sophisticated Atari 2600 sports games. Didn't I just say how innovative that was to have two different kinds of two-player options? While it is at its core an arcade take on the sport, there is a surprising amount of depth to the gameplay. Use the game select button to bring up the option screen, uh, where you can set various rules. Use the game select button. Okay, I believe that's select. We'll see. Uh, to bring up option screen where you can set various rules and choose between the different single player and multiplayer modes. Game select, yeah, that's okay. So let's start with. So let's play Double Dunk. Let's, uh. Chef. Okay, so Double Dunk has music, and we can choose one player. Two four-point game, three-point shots. I don't. I think this is all for one player. Oh no! This is and this is how you change the. Oh my god! It could go up to a twenty-four-point game, a forty-eight-point game, a fifteen-minute game. That's oh three-point shot. This is crazy. Hey, right, hold on. What? We're closing it. We're. <laughs> All right, so double dunk. So start in three, two, one. Let's pickle. Off the. Oh dear. Oh dear. That this isn't right. The emulation screwed up on the VS. This this is not right. That looked horrible. Okay. Okay, now it looks fine. I don't know. Wait, what are the controls? A is to shoot, but that didn't do anything. I pressed B and then it did something. Unless A and B do the same thing. And it's just not listening to the controls. Travel. Turnover. I think I'm green. Clear the ball. Travel. How am I traveling? Uh, <laughs> I don't understand this game. this ah the game is dying that's what ah that sound okay i don't like that sound that, but yeah but also like at the very beginning that i mean, like the screen was flashing and like pixels were flying all over the place it legitimately looked like a bug too, so I don't even know if this thing is playing right.
whatever. You know what? Double Dunk is probably a good game. It has a lot of cool options, but I'm not a fan. And it's and I it's honest honestly. What what game is that like? Um, ah, oh, I can't think of it. But I know there's what there. I know there's a basketball game, another basketball game on Atari 2600, which um. It was I there was it was two player. I don't think it, I don't think it's on this. Um I definitely played it out, you know, on the flashback. And it and it's and it's cool. I like that better than this basketball game. So <laughs> take that as you will. Double dunk not my favorite. I th it's it's basketball. We can say that. Did I like it? I'm going to say no. So that's two in a row. Food fight from the same 800 is a good game. I'm happy that that it's that we're time for food fight. Because this is a good game. When I said what? Oh, in the, oh, in your Metopia thing. <laughs> hey. Hurry, hurry, step right up. Earn your just desserts. Once there was a fellow named Charlie Chuck. Or Chuck E. Cheese. More than anything, Charlie loved to eat. Uh, so when he went to the chocolate factory, he headed straight for the food fight contest. Delicious ice cream cones, you mean chocolate, were on offer. But Charlie would have to get past an assortment of chefs and a crazy man named Willy Wonka uh, to lay claim to his prize. Fortunately, there were piles of fruits, vegetables, and other foods laying around that Charlie could use to stop his foes. And Slugworth. Unfortunately, the chefs had a similar idea. They say you should never play with your food, but in this case, it's the name of the game. Food Fight is a game for one or two players alternating. The goal is to grab the ice cream cone on each stage before the ice cream melts. But don't let the chefs get you. Run over a pile of food to pick some up. Lob at your opponents to earn points and clear a path to the cone. So yeah, let's look at the controls. I've played this before, but I don't remember the controls. Um, so there's restart game, which is why A and B are both throw. Easy. Let's start with food fight. Not start, but let's continue on with food fight. Uh, we'll st uh, we'll choose intermediate. Right not. Wait, is there uh yeah intermediate three two one? Let's pickle. Or not. Excuse me. Select starting level. That. Eat the cone. Player one. Let me just throw the pie at their face. Ha ha ha! Take that! Yummy ice cream. This is great. What kind of food are they holding? Are those pizzas? Pot pies? Dumplings? Yummy! Or no, they're probably tomatoes, if I were to guess, actually. I wonder what the yellow stuff is that you're throwing. Ha. Ha. I like that animation of him eating the ice cream. It's so cool. Eat my balalas. You monster. Uh. Ha. Yeah, uh, Family Guy. Yeah. When they were doing their improv thing, I remember that. But also, when I was in theater class, that's actually, uh, a, a, like, a, an exercise that they always did to the whole peel banana thing. How? I, I love that animation. Let's see that again! Instant replay! This game has instant replay? I don't remember that. Listen to that music! Maybe it's every five stages. <laughs> Look at me missing all the watermelon shots. <laughs> I love I love food fight. Oh! Look at all the bananas stick to me. What did they hit with one? Diddy Kong would love that. He throws bananas in Smash Bros. Well, well, really, he doesn't throw bananas. He takes out a banana peel with down B, and then you can pick it up and throw it. But still, he shoots a peanut with his neutral B. Well, 
Why do the chefs not want me to have a little bit of ice cream? Are they lactose intolerant or something? And they don't want me to enjoy the ice cream, but then again, what, they have pies! They can have pies, but not ice cream? Is there not- is there such thing as no lactose cream? I know there's no lactose ice cream, I think, because... Soy milk, right? Uh, I don't know what I'm saying. How? How? Okay, I'm getting kind of bored of this. We know. It's food fight. I'm, well, I'm, I'm not getting bored. It's like I would keep playing it. But we have games to go through. We have... That was only game number 10 out of 20 on this cartridge. We're only halfway done. We're halfway there. And yeah, so that was food fight. We definitely like that one. Probably of, of all the games so far... Of the first time that we played, I would say Food Fight is probably my favorite. That one's a legitimately, truly enjoyable game. Oh, and the next up is Gravatar, and now all my hopes and dreams are shattered. Gravatar? Okay, remember when I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the stream? You weren't here, Rachie, but Adventure was on a Atari plug-and-play by Jack Specific that I had. Another one of those games was Gravatar. This game is so hard. <laughs> it's it's um, I don't under I don't understand how anyone could do anything in it, let alone beat it. I need to look up a, a, like a playthrough of it just to see how people can actually beat it. Cause I can barely beat a single segment of a stage or something. It's crazy. <laughs> okay, the evil being called Gravatar is attempting to destroy the universe. With each galaxy it conquers, it leaves behind extreme gravitational forces, an explosive reactor, and deadly bunkers. Your mission is to stop Gravatar by taking back the 12 solar systems located in four galaxies that are under his control. In each solar system there is a sun, an alien reactor base, and a number of planets. To free the solar system you have two choices. Either visit all the planets and destroy the enemy bunkers or activate the reactor at the core of the alien base and escape before it explodes. So how do I get to alien? Wait, hold on. So each solar system there is a sun, an alien reactor base, and the planets. So you can go all to all the planets or the alien base. Yeah? I can't hear you. You're cutting out. Uh, before it explodes. You'll have to deal with strong gravitational forces, so make sure to keep your ship steady or you'll crash. Use the select mode. Choose between five difficulty levels. Even on difficulty one, it's impossible. Yeah? I can, I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. Alright, Gravatar. So, Wow, the select button for the different modes is really slow. Okay, we'll just do number one. Three, two, one, let's pickle. There we go. So, it looks like... So, I don't understand. Are these the... Am I in the solar system right now? Or is this the planet? Actually, this is easier to control on this than on a joystick. Surprisingly. But no, but no, you can't land. No, you can't land the ship. If you tr touch anything, you die. Ah! No, no, no! Oh. See, look, I can't even be kill this one enemy. That's not. That's not even shooting at me. It's just sitting there. I can't kill it. I kill it by running into it, and so I die. That's the only way to kill it is by killing myself. Oh. I suck at Gravatar. This game is so hard. Okay, we need a we need to explore. A what? Oh, Lois, Family Guy. See, that's a sun. Is this the enemy reactor base? Cuz I can't tell what's what. That's the sun. That just that just killed me. Right. I'm dead. Game over. All right. 
Let's try to figure. We need to figure this out. I play. I've been. I've been. I've. I've had a personal vendetta with this game since I was a kid, and I still don't. I still can't play it. Ah, oh, it is. It, it is infuriatingly difficult. This one. Oh my goodness. <sighs> that's its one redeeming. That's this game's one redeeming quality. Okay, we'll try it one more time to s try to figure out something here in Gravatar. Please, please. Ah, uh, watch me die to this thing now. I killed it. Okay, this is the base. And am I really expected to be able to fly through that? I don't understand how to actually start the game. I press the start button, but it doesn't do anything. I press A, and sometimes it does stuff. I have never, I don't think I've ever successfully cleared a single planet in all, I've played this game a lot as a kid in that plug and play without losing life. I've never beat a single planet without losing life. I don't think I've ever cleared a single solar system. We're done with Gravatar. I suck at it, I hate it, but I, I still like it. It's good. It's just hard. Uh, but with save states, um, it's probably doable. Uh, so Gravatar, I'll put as a yes, even though I'm terrible at it. It was still not a bad game. Next up is Missile Command. Who doesn't like Missile Command? This one's also a classic. Okay, we got some water. The peaceful Zardonians, welcome back. The peaceful Zardonians are under attack from the wicked Kryptolians. Who are launching interplanetary ballistic missiles that threaten to wipe out the planet Zardon once and for all. Uh oh. It's up to you to take control of Zardon's defense system and knock out those missiles out of the sky before they can harm the peaceful citizens. Choose your targets wisely and aim carefully because the consequences of failure are, are, failure are truly unthinkable. It's called a game over. Truly unthinkable. Missile Command is one of Atari's most popular titles. Definitely. And this Atari 2600 version was a staple of most people's collections. You need to launch anti-ballistic missiles from your three launches to take out incoming attacks. As your shots take time to reach the target, and you're shooting at moving objects, there's a bit of skill required to hit what you're aiming at. You also need to be careful not to run out of ammunition too quickly, lest you be left completely defenseless. The game continu continues till all of your cities are destroyed. Use the select button to play different variations of the game. Modes 1 through 17 are single player, while modes 18 through 34 are for two players alternating. Okay, cool. Okay, Missile Command. We're ready to start in three, two, one. Let's pickle. Okay. I have heard of battle toads. Uh. Say that again. The runaway guys. I've heard of that channel before. I think. Oh. Oh, okay, I've definitely heard of them then. I've. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how much ammo I have. I think that's like the thing below my curse. Like below my center thingy. Huh? I've. I have played Conker's Bad Fur Day on Rare Replay. I didn't like it very much, actually. It was boring to me. Also, I don't. Also, I'm not a fan of toilet humor, so that's another reason why I didn't like the game very much. No, 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 you can find it funny. You can reference them. I'm just saying. That's why I didn't like the game. I'm just not a fan of toilet humor, personally. <laughs> so, 
So yeah, below the center thing, that is definitely how much ammo I have. It just can't show it all at once, so it looks like I only have a certain amount of shots right now, but like I have a whole other, you know, set of... Other. So yeah, uh, Missile Command. This, this is a game. It's okay. It's nothing too fancy, but it's okay. It's Missile Command. I like it. It's an Atari classic, yeah? Out of the runaway guys, I, I the only one I really was I know Proton, John, and Chugga Conroy. Who else is there? I've never watched uh, Nintendo Capri Sun. I would pro I would probably say if I had to pick one, Proton John, because he's the one that did the Superman sixty four LP, right? So yeah, it's that, just for that single Let's Play. I, lo I loved his Superman 64 Let's Play. Oh, I'm about to lose a life! No! All my cities are being destroyed! I lost three. But I got an extra life back. For, uh, for score. But yeah, this is Missile Command. I like it. But we're going to move on to the next game. Because right now we're... This is more... Because I've played most of these. This is more just a showcase than me actually trying out these games. Because I've played most of them. I have not played Motorcycle though. Sword Quest is on here. Sword Quest Earth World specifically. Which... To be fair. Or to not be fair. Why on earth did Blaze want to put Sword Quest on this? Like, the only point of playing Sword Quest in the past was mostly for the contest. And even then, there's no instruction booklet here. Or the comic. So, there's what's the point in playing just the game without the other stuff needed to play the game? I don't understand why they put Sword Quest on here. Come on, Blaze. Okay, but other than that, Missile Command we like. And it was good. Next up is Motor Psycho. I have not played this one. I, to be, I haven't really played any of the 7800 games. So yeah, I have not played Motor Psycho or Ninja Golf. I know I tried out uh, Sword Quest Earth World before. I know Tempest, Video Pinball, Yars Return. I don't. I might have played Steeple Chase in the past. I can't remember. I might have. I just don't remember the name then. But um, so yeah, the but Night Driver. I don't know. So these next four are gonna be um brand new to me. Then the other ones are gonna be. Things I'm familiar with. So we're getting to new territory with Motor Psycho. It's a racing game. What? Mm, no, don't do that, please. Okay. Rev her up and let her rip. The winner's circle awaits in Motor Psycho. A fast and frenzied motorcycle racing game. Race through four different tracks as quickly as possible while maximizing your scores. So only four different tracks. Work the gear shift like a pro and keep your eyes on the road because these bikes have no brakes. Hit ramps at high speeds to launch yourself into the air, but watch where you're landing. Beat the clock and the other racers rack up the points and prove you're the wildest of them all. I need to reread that again to myself. Winter circle awaits a motorcycle. Fast and frenzy. Race through four different tracks as quickly as possible. Okay, work the gear shift like a pro and keep your eyes on the road. I suck at racing games. I've seen in uh, previous Evercade videos, so... Work the gear shift like a pro and keep your eyes on the road because the bikes have no brakes. Welcome back. Hit ramps at high speeds, launch yourself into the air. Okay, I understand that. Okay. Huh? Okay, so there's accelerate with A. B is jump. Why Why is there always a button to restart game? I guess that's just part of the 7800 controller there. Or I guess maybe that's just the... Re reset button rather than you know like on the 2600 which was on the console maybe okay G gear steer gear shift up so left and right is for steering up and down is for changing your gear i get that and select track okay we can do this well well we'll try it out at the very least whoops okay wait where's the re okay three two one go I kind of hear you. There's someone else that is my is kind of there, but maybe not officially. I can't hear you. When you when you were you talking far away from your mic? Cause that's when it cut out. 
a little bit. Oh god, I suck at racing games. Yes. See, the, my 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 biggest issue with racing games is I don't know the dip. Oh god, I just ex crashed and exploded into one of the other drivers. The thing is, I don't understand the difference between high gear and low gear. Dicey Dungeons. That's on. I'm pretty sure that's on Xbox Game Pass. I haven't played it yet. I but I. Oh god. I hate racing games! I just, I don't get them. They don't click with me. The only racing game that, the only racing game that really clicks with me, I, well, actually, I guess there are two. Um, obviously, there's Mario Kart 8, or just Mario Kart in general. And then, um, in, like, one of the previous ever, in, like, I think it was on one, one of the previous ever game ones, one of them I actually kind of understood pretty well. But, you know, this, this I don't get. I sorry, I can't I can't do racing games, we're moving on. I have not played Mario RPG. I knew that. I knew it had a randomizer motorcycle. I'm gonna say no just cause it's a racing game. I I'm not a huge fan of racing games, it's just not my thing. <clears throat> I think Metroid Zero Mission. No, I played Metroid Fusion on GBA like a little bit. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Next up is Night Driver on the 2600. So, if it's on the 2600, I should be able to get a get away with this one. Let's see. Race the Midnight Road to Night Driver, a challenging action racing game. Your goal is to score as many points as possible while racing through one of four different tracks. Again, only four tracks. Points are scored by passing checkpoints located throughout the track. If your car crashes into the side of the road, uncommon cars, or any other obstacles, you will lose all of your speed and a lot of time. You can choose from four tracks, beginner, pro, expert, and a special random track that is different every time. Yo, it has a procedurally generated track? Okay, that is pretty awesome for 1980 Night Driver. That is really cool, so we're going to be checking that out. Uh, the, key to, the key to winning is winning. No. The key to winning is in knowing when to accelerate and when to... Uh, no, the key to winning is beating the game. The key to winning is in knowing when to accelerate and when to slow down in order to avoid a crash. It takes a steady hand and keen sense of... And keen senses to rack up a high score in this tough test of driving skill. Use select mode, button, play with different rules and tracks. Modes 1 through 4, have timer. Modes 4 through 8, let you drive until you decide you finish. Okay. And that's really cool. Till you decide you finish. This, this sounds really cool. The features alone... Make this sound like a good game. Now, it all depends on how it actually plays. So, accelerate. That's the only button that there is. Okay. So, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Well, hold on. Let me look, read that. read that again. Both one through four have a timer. Four through eight let you drive until you're finished. And that, and I assume one through like the each one through four is the different stages. So four and eight are the random ones. So okay, so we're gonna start with one, and then we're we're gonna then we're gonna check out five. Then we're gonna do four and eight. So we're gonna look at four different uh, tracks here. So let's restart the timer. And three, two, one, let's pickle. Oh, oh, the steering is a little, uh, oh, yeah, it's wonky art is a decent way to put it. Right, I think the key is not to hold the accelerate button, but to s rapidly press it, because I'm actually able to control it a lot better like that already. Ouch. So basically, uh, the goal of the game is to get the highest score in the time in the time that you have. Just get the highest score. And are the trees the checkpoints? I think they are. Beep beep.
Okay, we're, I'm going to finish this track, and then we're going to see the score. And then we're going to check number five and just see what's different about, like, this timer or scoring system. And then we're going to check out the random course that's different every time. Now, I guess we I should check out a different stage here. I, can sh I should check out, like, number th state, like, course two or three and see what, th what they look like. I'm doing pretty good, actually. Ah, I crashed again. I cashed Banukud. Yes, I did. Heart container for four or five rupees is pretty good. Okay, so I got a score of 45. That's not bad. So let's try um, number five because this should be the same course. But yeah, there's no timer. So literally just play for as long as you want. And that's it. That is not. That is actually a pretty cool feature. If you just want some, if you just want something to distract you, not have. To, and if you get anxiety over a timer, doesn't matter. No timer here. Can't say it's a bad. No, I can't say it's a bad feature. It's it's just something a little extra. It's fine. Let's check out course two. Does it look different? Not, it doesn't look like uh, I can tell the beginning is different already, but yeah, it doesn't look any different visually. Like they didn't change the colors or anything. So let's check out course number three. Oh, what was that? Let's try that again. Oh, that's difficult. Okay, we're gonna check out the random course or like the the randomly generated one on the no timer mode so just give it a, a whirl okay. is it, are you watching a live stream or just youtube video okay Oh yeah, this is fine. You know what? Uh, that 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 probably does get a little boring with over time, but if for 1980, that is pretty cool. Night Driver gets a plus, and I will say it gets a like as well. Good job, Night Driver. You redeemed the racing genre of the Atari uh, Collection One. <laughs> okay, next up is Ninja Golf, which I've heard good things about. I've never played it, but I heard really good things about Ninja Golf 7800. So we're gonna check that. We're gonna check this one out. For ten years, you've trained to be a ninja. Your master tells you that it's time to take your final, most difficult test. You must complete the game of death. You must play nine holes of ninja golf. <laughs> you knew your master was a bit eccentric, but nothing prepared you for this. Sneak in a birdie between deadly kicks while you battle enemy ninjas and deadly creatures. Par for the course. Uh, par for this course means leaving the green littered with fallen foes. This is, this is just the craziest like setup ever. It's great. Play a mean game of golf and defeating enemies to rack up points. Find bonus items along the course to give yourself an edge. Once you've battled your way to the green, you'll have to fend off a dragon before you can sink your ball. Ninja Golf is one of the more beloved releases from the 7800 lineup. The quirky concept is an attention grabber. <laughs> it really is. But it... Backs up its bizarre concept with challenging and satisfying gameplay. Use the select game button to choose your desired difficulty level. Four levels are available. Only a master ninja will be able to handle the hottest of them. Battle for every hole. Out of context, that last line sounds really bad. So next up. Uh, aim shot move character for the D-pad. Select game, pause, restart game, 7800. Yeah, we get it. So swing club slash jump. Melee attack slash throw shuriken for B. A is swing and jump, and melee slash shuriken is B. Okay, that makes sense to me. Ninja golf. Three, two, one, let's pickle. Normal? Easy, kamikaze, or hard? We're going to go uh, with normal. After many years of ninja training, you are finally... Oh, whatever. Who cares about the story? We're, we care about the game. This is ninja golf. Have you ever heard of such a concept? 
Well, you did now. There's no music though, which saddens me. Oh, thank you. I didn't. I did not hear that. Sorry. Yeah, Discord has been bugging out lately. Okay, so it looks like the uh, the ball is on the way to the golf hole. Ah! Oh, wow. There's a gigantic frog! What does this have to do with Ninja Golf? If you haven't checked out, if you now that you've heard of Ninja Golf, have you ever heard of Ninja Baseball Batman? It's 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 a crazy arcade game that didn't really that wasn't like did not get a, a like was hardly released. Like it only got a few arcade cabinets, but it looks like a really cool game. I want to play. I want to try that. Ninja, yeah, Ninja Baseball Batman. I learned about that from the Angry Video Game Nerd. Oh, cool! That was a health potion that just healed me. Ow! 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 Leave me alone, you ninja! And you frogs! They are abusing me. They're trying to beat me up. I don't, I don't appreciate it. I know, I'm trying I'm just trying to shoot the golf ball into the hole. Okay, so obviously the kill the ninja with standing kick and the frogs with low kick. Okay. Oh, looks like we're on the green now. Oh. Getting closer. Oh, what is this? This is Ninja Golf, all right. This is a game of golf. Look at me. I'm fighting a dragon. Oh, my God. This happens on every single golf course ever. This is crazy. I, I, I really like this game. I beat the dragon. I did it. That was only hole one out of nine. Two. Oh, that's good. Ow, ow. The recovery heart chest by the web. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. In Deku Tree, which chest that is. Okay. Wow. I suck at the I suck at ninja golf. Okay. We've we we've we we well, I'm almost dead, but the we we understand the basic gameplay of it. I like that. Ninja golf is cool. So that gets a yes for a like from me. So that's 15 out of 20. We're almost done with Atari Collection 1. The Zora Tunic? Okay. Steeple Chase. Okay. Um, is that fan off? It is. Well, we only have a few games left. Steeple Chase, 1980. Racing four players. Holy moly. You can actually play all four players here on the VS, which is cool. So looking at the control scheme for a moment, it's just a jump button. Yeah, so I'm probably going to like this one because it's because it's not a typical racing game. Steeple Chase is a split-screen horse racing game. The object is to be the first player to advance your horse to the right side of the screen. You'll approach hurdles of different sizes that you'll have to jump and clear to stay ahead. If you hit a hurdle, you'll lose some ground as your horse gets back on his hooves. 
Up to four players can play at once. Each player should press the jump button to join at the start of the race. Any horse is not controlled by a player will be taken over by the computer. May the best racer win. Use the game. Use the select game button to toggle various difficulty parameters, including the skill of the computer opponent and the intervals between hurdles. Modes three and six provide the highest challenge, so only master jockeys should apply. Okay. This is a, a horse racing game of some kind. I've never played it. Three, two, one. Let's pickle. I am the yellow one at the bottom, I think. Yes, I'm definitely yellow at the bottom. Dang it, I'm losing. Yeah, but I was taking damage. I was hitting the, I wasn't clearing the hurdles 100%. So yeah, this is just, uh, this is one button action. This is okay. Am I great at it? No. But the fact, for one, this is four players. How many Atari 2600 games are more than two players? Not many. You can, seriously. The fact is four players alone, you know, that that's really cool. And the gameplay is simple. Press a button and it involves, you know, you just have to be very careful about your timing. So it's all about uh, skill reflex, skill and reflexes. But it, but it's simple. I like it. Where was the, str where was strength upgrade? How much was it? 10 rupees. My final try, in, in my last OTR, my final try, but Triforce piece is only like 55 rupees or something. Did I win? I win! Woo! Okay. So it said three and six were the hardest. So let's try three. Wow, the computer, the three computers, the three computers are destroying me. Oh, okay, it's clearly uh, I'm bad, but yeah, steeple chase, not bad. I'll give that one a, I'll give that one a like too. So far, the only games I haven't liked from Atari One were Desert Falcon and Motorcycle. Oh, and Double Dunk. That's it. Yeah, that basketball one. So far, only three. And the other four that are less... Well, okay, I I can already say I don't like Sword Quest Earthworld. Because, for one, I don't understand its inclusion on here. Um, but the other three I like. So, well, let's let's, let's quickly uh, go through Sword Quest. So, the only, the only control is move character or enter room slash pick up item. So, there's that for one. So let's read the description. Huh? Hey. Sword Quest Earthworld is an action adventure game where you need to solve mysteries in pursuit of the legendary Sword of Ultimate Sorcery. You'll explore 12 rooms named after the signs of the Zodiac, each with its own trials and tests you'll have to complete in order to locate special items. You'll often need certain magical objects to help you overcome these challenges, such as using a lamp to illuminate the changing or the charging horns in the dark. Wait, what? <clears throat> Such as the a lamp to illuminate the charging horns in the dark chamber of Taurus. Every so often, you might see numbers flash after you after completing tasks. The sets of numbers refer to pages in a comic book that was included in the original release of Sword Quest Earthworld and were used for a special contest. While that contest ended a very long time ago, Sword, Sword Quest Earthworld remains an enjoyable, if somewhat mysterious, game all, game all on its own. Figuring out which combinations of items you need to carry into each room in order to reveal all of its secrets is a test of wits and endurance. Only the greatest of champions will be able to claim the sword for their own. Uh, sure, let, let, let's just let's go with it. Let, let's just go with it. Let's just start. Hey, okay. sword quest, and they didn't say Earthworld on it. Start. I'm pressing the start button. It just makes the logo disappear. 
Alright, no music, but it looks like I have three different items. Okay, I can't move my cursor properly. Listen to this. And like, things hardly move. I've never played Nino Kuni. I've seen it a little bit before. Grab. Ah. Oh. This is horrible so far. Seriously, I can't move my cursor. Is there some Is this an emulation issue? Because this is not how this should be. Ow. Oh, I just reset the game. Oh no, I reset the game. Okay. Here okay, here's the actual part of the game now, the challenges. Dang it. I have Donkey Kong 64 on my console. I think it's all right, right? I don't think it's an amazing game. I think it's all right though. I think I think Rare took it a little bit too far with all the collectibles though. There's just too much going on in that game. Can I? Okay, no. I'm just gonna save state because I don't really care. I just want to beat the one challenge. Huh? N no, I never played Ace Attorney. Quick save. No, I meant to hit load. Ah, oh, I just ruined it all. Okay, come on. Uh, quick save. Hooray! I beat what I beat that challenge finally. Next one. Ah, uh, load last save. Oh my god. The save state abuse. Hooray! I did it. Now Okay. What is this game? It would be so bad if this me if this part of the game w worked. Alright. Oh, I can't go that way. Go down! Cursor! Oh my goodness. Oh, how did I fail there? Hooray, I did something. Do, do I have a full inventory? Is that what's going on? But look, every time I press the button, the cursor just does not move every time. Yeah, this, uh, I don't understand. I'm done with Sword Quest. No, I don't like it. So that's that one gets a hard no. So now we're going to move on to the last three games of uh, this collection, and which are 
good game. All three games are good on their own. So we're going to end definitely end on a good note. So let's reset the timer and move on to Tempest. Now, th just like, um, what was it? Aqua Venture. This game was never uh, originally released. Yep. The arcade hit shooter Tempest comes home to the Atari 2600. Well, sort of. Atari 2600 Tempest was a prototype that never saw release back in the day for a variety of reasons. It was finally made available in 2005, allowing, par pl allowing players a chance to get their first glimpse at how Atari planned to bring the rather advanced arcade game to the console. While the arcade's sharp vector-based graphics couldn't be reduced by the 2600, the basic gameplay is similar. Each stage consists of a tunnel of sorts, and you can move your ship around its mouth. Enemies crawl up from the depths, and you need to blast them away before they reach you. Once per stage, you can use your super zapper to clear away all the enemies on screen. Use the game select button to adjust the difficulty and your starting number of lives. While this version lacks the style of some of the gameplay complexity of the arcade version, it's a fascinating piece of history and a unique shooter in the console's lineup. Cool. So yeah, let's just start with Tempest. Actually, let's look at the controls. Just to make sure we understand what we're doing. So, it's just uh, fire, use super zapper, which is up plus fire. And it's missing a close parenthesis. So, cool. I'm not even going to bother reporting that one. Nope. Okay. Right. If, you're, if, uh, if they're playing TP Rando in, uh, just on an emulator, not on console... Um, they could be using further mods to change textures and things using a texture pack or something. So yeah. This is Tempest. So you just move and shoot. And, uh, hopefully not die like I just did. Rip. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, I never started the timer. Whoops. Silly me. Punch in the shoulder. Poke in the eye. Cut off my tongue. Oh, uh, it's a Cat Icarus reference. Let's restart that. Actually, I want to read the description again. Uh, hey. Ton of swords, you can move your ship around its mouth. Enemies crawl up, and you need to blast them away. And super zapper, and that's it. Difficulty in your starting number of lives. Okay, right, just want to make sure that I wasn't missing anything. So let's, let's try it one more time. So let's start. Glitch for what? Oh, me either. Hooray! I beat the stage. Yeah, th th it's just Tempest, and this is and this is an early twenty six hundred prototype. So, I mean, you can't complain. This it's Tempest. It's all right. I wouldn't say it's the best game on this collection. It's kind of boring, but it's definitely not. It's not bad or anything. And I, I'm also bad at it, but that's beside the point. Just because I'm bad, d does just because I'm bad doesn't mean the game is bad. Tempest is okay. Oh. Alright, so last two games. Video Pinball and Yars Return. So let's go. Video Pinball. Fun fact. Um, I, in, in, in this closet, like, you can't even see, but, like, I have a closet in there. I have a box with my grandfather's old Atari 2600 in it. And um, in this drawer in front of me, I actually have a cartridge of Video Pinball. That works. That Atari 2600 works. And, yeah, so and just a couple weeks ago, I... Uh, I was able I was able to get hooked up and I was playing video pinball on the actual 2600, so it's pretty cool. So video pinball, huh? What's what? I don't know what you're asking. I don't know Twilight Princess that much. Video pinball is the pinball simulation for one or two players. You begin the game with three balls and need to score as many points as possible by hitting the various bumpers, spinners, and rollovers on the table. It's pinball. We know pinball. An extra ball can be earned by hitting the Atari logo four times in a row. Launch the ball by pressing down to pull back the spring, then press the button to start the action. Press left or right to activate each flipper independently or press up to activate both at the same time. Hold the button and press in any direction to nudge the ball during play. Be careful you don't tilt. 
Wait, what? Hold the button and press in any direction to nudge the ball during play, but be careful you don't tilt. Show off your skills and become a true pinball wizard. There are two difficulty levels and four game variations included. Modes 1 and 3 are single player, and while 2 are two and 4 are for two players. Oh, yeah. That's why it says four video games, which is, again. So, video pinball. Oh, okay, I have to hit start first. So what does it mean to not tilt the table? Like I'm pressing the... Hmm. So far, so good. Oh yeah, this ball is just flying around everywhere. Boom. Yo, two. Will I get an extra ball? I need to hit the Atari logo four times in a row. I'm doing way better on this than I did on the actual console. I don't know why. I've barely done anything so far. The ball just keeps flying around doing its own thing. I wonder if that's an emulation thing rather than... <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Read dead scream ain't good. Oh, ooh, three. Ah, come on. I need one more Atari logo for an extra life. But yeah, this is pinball. There's, there's, not, there's nothing too special about this. Yo, I did it. Got the extra life. No, what? Uh, yeah. Waluigi pinball. I'm not. I'm hardly doing anything right now. This is crazy. Okay, so actually, I want to make a save state here, but I want to reset the game because I want to understand what it was saying about the whole tilting thing. So it says, "That." So I didn't push the thing down all the way. Interesting. Let's try that again. Because it says, "Be careful, don't tilt." Hold the button. And then press the thing to nudge the ball. Huh. Hello, whoever just joined. What'd they say? They left already. They came and said one thing and then left. I think I know what they said, but I'm not sure and I'm not going to repeat it, so. Oh, whatever. That was video pinball. That was the game. It's alright. It's pinball. And it's Atari 2600. What do you expect? So, it's fine. Uh, So, video pinball. I'll give that a yes. Oh, I never said if I uh, on my spreadsheet if I liked Centipede. I'm going to say yes because it's okay. It just it hurts my thumb with the pressing the button. Okay. Last game, Yars Return. I really like that. And I have Yars Revenge on cartridge for the 2600. I don't have Yars Return, but I have Yars Revenge. Okay. So the final game for uh, this uh, Atari Collection 1 on the Evercade cartridge 1. Created in 2005 as a follow-up to the legendary Yars Revenge. Wait, what? This one's homebrew? Well, then, uh, that totally explains why I don't have this on cartridge. Because this one's a homebrew. Created in 2005 as a follow-up to the legendary Yars Revenge. Which, 
I have. I see. I didn't even. So I guess I haven't played Yards Return before. I've only played Yards Revenge. I was wrong, and the timer's still going. I need to reset that. See, we learn something new every day. Yards Return puts an interesting spin on the classic gameplay. Once again, the Yards need to go to battle against the Kotiles using their mighty Zorlon cannon. These words. This time, the Kotile sits in the middle of the play area, surrounded by its shield. Take control of the Yar and chip away at the ship or at the shield until you have a clear shot, then let the Zarlon cannon fly and destroy the Kotile. With the action happening in all directions, Yars returns even more tense than the original, which was a good game. Use the uh, game select button to play different modes. 0, 2, and 4 or in 6 are single player. 1, 3, 5, and 7 allow for two players to alternate. Higher modes offer a greater challenge with the ultimate test of skill being modes 6 and 7. Try them out. So yeah, 6 is single player, 7 is uh, uh, multi. So cool. Yards Return, our final game. Let's go. It's copyright 2005 Atari. Let's go. Oh, I forgot. I just hit myself with my own Zotar cannon or whatever it's called. Oh, jeez. Oh, those little tiny things. I call them grains of rice, or at least I... D uh, hold on. Uh, if I remember correctly, Yars Revenge... I, I, I've known this game for a very long time. Was this? I believe this was also on that Atari plug-and-play that I had by Jack, Jack Specific. I've talked about that thing a lot today. Yo, boom! I believe Yars Revenge was also on it, so I was like, oh, as a kid, I used to call them grains of rice, because what else would they be? I don't know. I don't know what they're supposed to be. I think they're just supposed to be, like, soldier ships. Like... The, the, the thing in the center is a big, gigantic battleship, you know, and so am I. And those little things are like fighter jets. You know, like, like, like little, uh, little, little spaceships that just have one single person. Yeah, that's, that's what I imagine them. But no, they're grains of rice. It's better to think of them like that. It's funnier. Okay. So, yeah, this is... Okay, it... Is that an emu is that how it's supposed to be or is that an emulation error cuz it's literally like looking like there are two of that ship on the screen and that's very disorienting That could be I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be or if that's just an emulation thing But either way it's very disorienting and kind of hurts my eyes when it does that ugh it's uh I don't like that Let's check out 6 cuz that's the hardest difficulty So, how do I get my Zotar Cannon in level 6? Oh! I have a gun! In this version. Wait, did I always have a gun? I don't know, maybe I have to, maybe I have to clear out all the blocks first to get it? I'm really not sure. Whatever. The point is, it's just like Yars' uh, Revenge, except uh, maybe a bad emulation, like how that basketball game earlier had a really weird issue. I'm not sure. But it's Yars' Return, and we like that. It's just like Yars' Revenge, so it gets a plus. So of all the games, so yeah, there are only three games. Uh, no, wait. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I forgot Sword Quest. Yeah, there are only four games that I didn't really like on this collection. Sword Quest, Earthworld... Uh, Motorcycle, uh, Double Dunk, and Desert Falcon. And that's about it. The rest, I think, were really good. So, yeah. Um, f for people, you know, who don't, you know, haven't really played Atari games before, this is a great collection. Um, uh, uh, so, except, for, uh, well, the 7800 games is the only platform I can play them on, but for, for the, all the 2600 games, I'd be, if I were to play these again, it wouldn't be on this. It'd just be on my Flashback 9 with that SD card that has, uh, you know, every 2600 game on it, period. And play with the actual joystick, too. It's pretty cool. I like the Flashback 9. But yeah, 
Um, this was a very good collection of games. So yeah, good job, Blaze. Except again, I'm still questioning the inclusion of Sword Quest Earthworld. There could have been there could have been a uh, something better, I think, because that that just is weird. And the menu doesn't seem to work properly with the cursors. I don't know if that's emulation or if that's how the game normally was. If it's supposed to be that slow on the on like to move your cursor, I don't know. That's beside the point. Okay, ending uh, the recording, not ending the stream. So, but I'm gonna give my outro. We had we had uh, we had fun with this one though with Atari Collection one. So my goal right now is to go in order, by the way, for the cartridges. So that's why I also have plugged uh, in the VS is Data East one. We're not gonna be doing that right now, but that's gonna be the next one that I do after uh, now that I'm done with Atari Collection one. So yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you all had a nice time. I'm Joshua Six Hundred. I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe to me here on YouTube and follow me on Twitch where you can watch this stuff live. And yeah, pretty fun. Okay, goodbye.